Smart cues. Smart cues. Under, oh, shit, uh, we have a countdown. This is Don't Panic, episode number 301, recorded February 1st, 2021. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and we couldn't do it without, of course, you. I am Sean Jennings, joined as always by a couple of guys who always park on the right side of the street. It's Colby Rabadou and Dan Miller. Good evening, gentlemen. Yeah. Can we talk about our episodes as like centuries? The fourth century, the fourth century AP after panic. <laughs> I like we've that. already panicked <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that ship has sailed long ago uh that, yeah. that's perfect i love that 301 it's all it's all now we get to cruise for 99 episodes <laughs> after, after our great job last week amazing <laughs> i did i did amazing do, uh this week in pickstory came up on the website and i happened to look back at one of those old episodes and it was it was that short span of time I was doing it from my recliner. If you remember, this was like episode thirty. This was way, 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 way back. Um, God, we looked like children. It was it was wild. It was wild. Yes. Yeah, I watched some of the, some excerpts from back in the day when I was doing the new website. It was weird. Yeah, we were but children. A whole world ahead of us. Little did we know it would all be downhill. <laughs> we would spend 2020 locked in our apartments. Which I was doing already, but, you know. Sean, I mean, you you are doing it right. You've been training this whole time. <laughs> Honestly, my whole life has led me to this <laughs> moment. I'm the man for the moment. Amazing. I'm down, like... I am not upset about having to stay at home. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's why that's why I'm hoping that like some things don't return to normal. For sure. Do you got any specific examples? Like um the expat like I was thinking this today when I was looking outside. Uh no one should ever have to go into an office ever again. Now, people can, uh, and sometimes, like, people can if they want to, but I feel like it should no longer be the case that, like, someone on a day like today where it's, like, snowing in New York City should have, oh, I got to go into, like, the Goldman Sachs office. Like, come on, like, we all know that's a waste of everybody. That's one thing. Um. Uh, outdoor dining. I hope outdoor dining remains. Yeah. I I think every place should have have an outdoor space. But I, I I'm like we maybe have talked about this. Uh. When like maybe it'll be sooner than I think, but I have a feeling that even once it is like quote unquote safe to to do things indoors with people and stuff. I think a lot of people won't. Uh especially when you start to look at these the uh like the flu numbers where like that that county in in England literally couldn't detect any strains of the flu in in all of its blood samples. Yeah. Uh that's nice. Uh I wonder if people won't want to keep wearing masks and not going to 5000 person concerts. Uh, for that benefit, some people will. I don't think some people won't. Uh, yeah. I haven't been sick in a year. Yeah, That's it's weird. been almost exactly a year for me. I got my my terrible case of the flu, which was definitely not COVID because I got a flu test and you can only have one virus at a time. Um, <laughs> exactly a year ago. It's true. Uh, that is a true fact. Did you know that? No, it's it's not like a, a husband and wife can't be charged for the same crime type of, <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> yeah, well, from from the heat's perspective, kind of. Apparently, like it's more like a uh, you know this body ain't big enough for the, the both of us sort of thing. And mm. if you have one virus, like 
another virus is not going to have the like there won't be any resources for it to feed off of because like your body's just going to be like completely taken over by this other virus. I can see Colby's gears grinding. Like, how can I perpetually have the flu so I don't get coronavirus? <laughs> Maybe not the flu, but could I just have a cold all the time? Like, that I think you, I think you got to be pretty sick. Yeah. This is the one person on earth who does get both. God. <laughs> right, right. A medical miracle. This man can host three, four, five viruses. <laughs> time. <laughs> you start infecting stuff, see what the limit is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I agree with that, Dan. I, I think <laughs> human beings are social, not the virus thing. I think human beings are social creatures. <laughs> and and I, I do think, I, I think the tolerance for mask wearing is going to be in America. Is gonna is is not gonna. I just don't think. I think there'll be a big spike in events and outdoor and and all kind of event and all that, and then I think it'll go back to levels it was pre-pandemic. I I just don't foresee a change. I love you don't think more masks. people will be wearing masks after the pandemic. I for think the next ten years than I think, they did before. I think because it was like zero percent before the pandemic, right? right. I think it's gonna be like ten percent. Like I don't think it's gonna be none. Ten percent. That's a lot. But that's mostly going to be the elderly, I think, people with like actual medical conditions, um, which I think is a positive thing, by the way. It removes the social stigma of, you know, I think we've all been at an airport pre-pandemic and you see someone wearing a mask from another country, especially in Asia, where it's very much more common. You're like, whoa, what's that about? Um, so I think it will be more common. But I also don't think those are people who may not leave their homes a lot and may not are theoretically at risk. I don't know. I just don't think uh, you'll still have Coachella's and you'll still have, you know, yeah. big, big events. I, I don't, I don't think that, you know, you'll still have resorts with a bunch of hot people on spring break and swimming pools with beer. I noticed you named a bunch of outdoor activities, uh, which I would be fine with. But the thing I'm thinking about is like, I would be hesitant to go to like uh, one of those, huge packed basement clubs in new york city um i would be hesitant to i don't know if i would or not but i would definitely think twice and in a situation like that or definitely on an airplane or the subway i just i might just wear a mask always on the airplane or subway i i i do not it does not bother me anymore it really doesn't do you know that i actually am i is am i the only one here i have dreams i have a lot of weird dreams but i have a dream where and it's like a recurring, not the details of it, but the overallness is recurring where I like am in a store in my dream or like I'm I'm around people and then I realize I'm not wearing a mask and I like have an anxiety fit because I'm like, oh my God, I'm not, how did I walk in here not wearing a mask? Like it's a recurring nightmare. I've had that too. Colby, you're muted. I was going to say one time in like it was probably in the summer i don't know why what came over me like it i had been doing the same thing for months but i left my apartment without without a mask on like i got all the way outside and i was like <sighs> like something is wrong i i think you know what it was i walked out the front door of my building and i was like ah the 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 fresh air like i can i'm i'm like really enjoying breathing the fresh air and then I realized why I was enjoying breathing. The <laughs> yep, those and those are my favorite. I've been to like a like a Target or a supermarket where you see the one person with like their shirt over their nose who like clearly doesn't didn't have a mask, and you're like, buddy, I, I don't think that's how it works. Mm -hmm. No, I yeah. only got over that anxiety because I put masks literally everywhere. Like I have five in my car, several at home. I keep one like in my jacket pocket permanently. Um, I just always have a mask candy. You never be too careful. The, the car was what really got me in the, the past couple of months. We've been living the car lifestyle. And I, we had two incidents where we, because we don't have that many masks because in New York, we just put it next to the door and it's, it's hard to forget. Um, but when you spend days on end, just never wearing a mask, uh, you forget and you're in the car and it's not like, you just stepped out of your apartment. And you got to walk back five minutes. You're like 45 minutes away. And you're like, no. But do you guys primarily use cloth masks? Is that the idea? 
Yeah, he's those disposable three layered. I don't know what they call it. Surgical masks? Is that what they call yeah, them? Yeah, medical masks, yeah. Hmm. For a while I had I had some like I had like disposable ones, but they I got one batch of them and they were fine. And I got a second batch of the same ones and they were absolute trash. And every like they would just break like the the ear things. They were a little too small. That was mm. the problem. So like the ear things would break. Sometimes it was fine. Like sometimes they would last for six hours and it'd be okay. But sometimes they would break like it's not two want. minutes after you put them on. So I it, during that period I started carrying like three extra ones with me because they would break all the time. But I don't know. Where did you get these masks? Because back then, they were hard to get. Those were from Amazon. Oh. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't right at the beginning. That was definitely like in the summer. So I just gambled on some masks. Actually, this is a, a relevant conversation that I'm going to interrupt with what I think will be a really great sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. I, I don't speak, have speak of the access devil. to a mute button, so I figured I might as well live it up rather than try and mute it. Yeah, um, work it in. Uh, well, there's this thing going around now that it, everyone's concerned the single-layer cloth or those paper masks won't be enough uh, against these new, more contagious variants. So I gambled. You can't. It's very hard to get N95 masks, which is what they say you actually need. They're very hard to find. But there are Korean N95 masks. They're called KN95 or something like that. It's the Korean yeah. version. So I ordered some online and they came in and I have absolutely no way of knowing if they're legitimate or not. And it's kind of fantastic because it looks legit and there's absolutely, and they like are a little thicker than the normal masks. And I have absolutely no idea if they work or not. And I don't know why I ordered them because I, I guess they're not going to be worse than the other ones, but at the same time, it's like they. This could just be like an old diaper they cut up and put some strings on. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, well, you'll have to let us know uh, if you get sick. <laughs> if I get COVID, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah that that'll Stay be my, my greatest review ever. <laughs> <sighs> Funny. So, uh, so what else is going on, guys? Anything else? Anything else of note? Hmm. I got a router. Yep. I think it's going to be big, but I just set it up this afternoon, so I don't, I don't know. Like, so far, the thing hasn't happened where my internet just stops working for 60 to, to like 120 seconds. Wow. Yeah. The, I don't know. It's the same router Dan has. It has a lot of, uh, bells and whistles oh, i would expect nothing less yes i i really i really debated for a long time whether or not i wanted to either wait for them to release that router in a wi-fi 6 version or just like get another like ridiculous well like why are routers so stupid looking Get another ridiculous looking router that is like Wi Fi 6 and, you know. The Wi Fi 6 Alien Extreme Edition. <laughs> right. The latest Classic gamer has hybrid. Like, has like 38 antennas sticking out of it for no reason. <laughs> right. Right. It looks like I a sea like, urchin. <laughs> yeah, they, they, right. They look like spiders or like giant, uh, I don't know, crabs. And then, then you immediately like shove it under something so you'd never have to look <laughs> at it. Exactly. Um, so I, I didn't, I decided it doesn't matter. And I got the, the ubiquity like router in a, in a, in a package thing. It's not ugly. Yeah, it's, it looks pretty good. Now, yeah. I don't know anything about Wi-Fi 6. Is it just faster? I read so many articles about it. It's like. It's faster and it's allegedly supposed to be better for more things. Like it deals with better for like having more devices. Uh -huh. It it so according to this article, I very quickly googled. 
Um, Wi-Fi 5 has a theoretical maximum of 3.5 gigabits, uh, gigabytes per second. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 goes to 9.6, so you're almost tripling the potential max speed. Uh, That's already three times faster than what almost anyone can get uh, for internet speeds. <laughs> That's really what I need with my 200 megabit per second uh, Comcast. <laughs> but the other thing is that it does introduce new technologies to help mitigate the issues that come with a lot. It let it lets routers communicate with more devices at once. Lets routers send data to multiple devices in the same broadcast. It lets Wi-Fi devices schedule check-ins with the routers. Um, yeah, I mean, I just saw a commercial the other day for uh, Xfinity. Now claiming because they they'll sell you their router, you know, as part of your package, and they're like, our routers now support gigabit internet, and I'm like, <laughs> but you won't sell me gigabit internet, so that's <laughs> bullshit. I was very annoyed. I'm like, so you mean like the ten percent of your coverage area that has gigabit internet can use this? Awesome, yeah. thanks Xfinity. I had I had Xfinity gigabit for a little while, and I never got more than four hundred megabits. <laughs> It's all a scam. Well, I told you guys about the. Um, I now have data caps for the first time. In my, do you guys have data caps? I I have the same data caps you have, Sean. I got I got the first. I got the same message that was like, "Good news! Like for the first time ever, you now have one terabyte like of data a month." But but did you look and see what your usage is in the past? Yeah, um, mine's like five or six hundred gigabits. A month. Yeah, so is mine, except this month I used like 1.6 terabytes. So I started, it was crazy. I started getting these alerts. It was like the Xfinity app, and it's like, you have used 100% of your data. I'm like, what data? What are you talking about? I was like, I was so <laughs> baffled, and it's like, no, it turns out I just used an insane amount of internet last month. Go figure. What did you do? I was trying to figure that out. I think a part of it was when I started working from home after Christmas. I, I updated all my OneDrive, Dropboxes, Google Drives, and like updated my syncing on everything. So I so I had a lot of large files flying around. Um, and I also think using this new Riverside system, uh, I'm downloading a lot bigger files from you guys every oh, week. Yeah. Uh, because I would save them locally, so I was recording the stream. But now, like each of you generate like two gigabytes of files on your own every episode every week. So. Mm. I mean that that's sixteen gigabytes out of a thousand. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then there's with Matt, and then you you know you start multiplying. I I know. I know. Hey, I agree, and I don't. I hope I don't hit it in the future. But I was like, that's it's really expensive to get unlimited. So. I also like Comcast has also had the thing on your account where like you've been able to see how much data you use for a long time like they've always had that chart mm -hmm. um and like one time i looked i compared like my router also had that info and it 100 percent said i used more more internet on comcast than it did on my router which i find suspicious suspicious incredibly so uh incredibly so. This, this is only kind of related but we were out of this apartment for a month and we unplugged everything except the refrigerator and we expected the bill to decrease significantly nobody home only the refrigerator is running everything's everything is unplugged either not getting that phantom draw stuff and it only went down like 20 percent it's like like what the heck is this and then we like I had never looked at an electric bill very closely, but at least for us, about half of the bill is uh, static. It's always going to be like you're, you're charged 30 bucks no matter how much electricity you use. It's like Delivery a service fee. fee. Delivery yeah. fee, yeah. And then the actual cost of the electricity is like pennies, not really. It's like nothing. I We very rarely use more than like, 30 40 dollars of actual electricity in the past um so i i was very scandalized by that well that's what was wild when i moved to texas was uh texas has a uh so like in massachusetts 
you just have the people who give you electricity. You don't like get to choose. It's just the people who service you. Um, in Texas, that's not the case. You can buy electricity from anybody. And there's a website you go on. It's all the, I would compare it to like auto insurance, where it's like you're kind of getting the same thing, but there are a bunch of companies to choose from. And you would be shocked at the price differences. And the electricity was not that I'm like for deregulating the market or anything, but it was wild to go on and be like, you have 300 different options for electricity. And it was like, you could get it 100% renewable or 50% renewable, or you could get it with with uh, cheaper upfront, like per fixed fees, like you have, Dan, but with a cheaper individual rate per, per how much power you use, or the other way around where the flat rate's higher, but it's high. it was like, it was crazy, but it was cool to have so many options um, and, and really get to find a bill that worked for you. Do you have, Sean, where you are in Massachusetts, do they have the... I, I don't, I honestly don't even know. Like, there's a thing here where they, they like, you can, they try and get you to lock in a rate. So, so like, they try and get you to say, like, oh, I'm going to pay, like, you know, X dollars per, like, I don't know, like, kilowatt hour for the year. Yeah. And it's, like... I don't know, like, I don't know who does that. It doesn't, like, I super don't understand enough to about electricity to know if that's a good decision or not. But I suspect it's not because what happens here is, like, there will be a, like, door-to-door -door salesperson who, like, sneaks sneaks into your apartment building and, like, goes around and knocks on everyone's door and, like, aggressively tries to get you to, to sign a paper which he leaves with, and then suddenly you, like, are in this program. Yep. Oh, I've had those people come to my door. Absolutely. So weird. The other thing they get you for, too, is in Massachusetts, it's recently been, uh, in the last couple of years, you can now, so you can't choose the person who actually gets the power to your house. Like, it's Eversource or National Grid or one of those companies, depending on where you are. But you are now allowed to select the company that services the power to that company. Yes. Um, we have this in New York, too. But it's incredibly confusing and very predatory. I've had a lot of those people. I had a guy at an airport. An air I was in Chicago at an airport at O'Hare. And I had this guy come up to me. He's like, uh, uh, you, sir, sir, do you own a home? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And he's he's like, well, I, I any state you live in, I can get you electricity, any electricity you want. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, I'm in a goddamn airport. I don't want to buy electricity. Any electricity you want. I mean, this dude was like, and I thought he was like a solar company or something. He's like, no, 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 no. We we get the electricity to your power company. I'm like, I don't care who they get it from. <laughs> what do I care? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's absolutely wild. I get that. Uh, when I was going to see Star Wars: The Force Awakens in movie theaters, they had the solar people who were out there oh. pitching you on on signing up. There's nobody worse when it comes to if you own a home, people come to your home than. So if I had a dollar for every solar salesman who came to my house, I would have bought solar panels by now. I mean, it's it's just. Oh, they're selling you solar panels. Oh, uh, so great! And they they all do the same thing where they come to the door and say, "Hey, I was in your neighborhood and I I looked at your house and you you face regardless of direction. Uh, and it looks like your house would be a great candidate for solar. I'd love to I'd love to do up a rapport and and come out and and quote you explain to you the pro. You know, they have a lot of rebates now. It basically, pays for itself. I mean, they're all the exact same. Um. It's... Does it pay for itself? You know, it's one of those things. I know people who've done it, and it's it's it it kind of does, but it also comes with a lot of hassles that go with it. Like if everything goes right, it pays for itself. But you have to like own the house for at least like ten years, and you have to hope the company that puts them on puts them on properly and doesn't put a bunch of holes in your roof, um, and a bunch of little things like that. But if it goes well, yes, they do pay for themselves. Did you guys see the pictures? Have you guys seen the pictures of my parents' crazy solar panel thing? No. The the solar flower. I love that thing. Yes. It's called like a smart flower or something, but it's a big like sunflower shaped solar panel that follows the sun. Like it it is it like has a stem and it has like petals that are <laughs> solar panels. Huh. And it like follows the sun and it closes at night like it goes to sleep like it like sh it like like a, Wait, like what, a what's fan. the purpose of closing it it's cool um, it is cool 
I don't actually know normally. It does have some like benefits of it like cleans the snow off itself sort of in the winter. I, I don't know if there is any benefit to it doing that like during the non-winter times. I have no idea. Yeah, I did notice that uh, at our place in Vermont, all the, the buildings on the property had solar panels. And at a certain point, they no longer see the sun. <laughs> In a Vermont right. winter. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, guys, uh, uh, we've pattered on long enough. I, I think it's time we get to what people are really here. You know, it's so funny. I go watch those old episodes, and I'm like, we jumped to the tech news right in minute one. I mean, we did not <laughs> screw. How did we talk for a whole hour about all this dumb stuff? I don't know. Uh, but we've got some stories here to talk about. If you guys want to take a look in the rundown, see where we're going to start tonight. In the frozen tundra that is New England, guys, what do you uh, what do you think? A real mediocre group of stories here. Hmm. I'm gonna undersell them desperately so people people think they're good. Hmm. This was absolute, and I will be the first to admit this was absolutely a week of I skipped the biggest story in the news because I did not understand it and did not want to have to try to explain it. I do it all the time on this show. If anyone out there wonders, like, why don't they talk about, like, the actual big stories in tech? And it's because usually I don't understand them. It's and too I know I'm going to have to, like, Google them on the fly and try and figure It's like, oh, it's, uh, you know, China is blocking Facebook for, for this. And I'm like, I don't know. What do you? So I, I'm the first bit. I know the GameStop story is the big story of the week. I don't understand what it is. I've read all about it, and I still don't quite understand it. And so that's why we're not talking about it. Unless you guys really want to talk about it. Maybe one of you understands it. Maybe maybe our maybe our byline our show byline should be like revisionist tech news or something. <laughs> it honestly is. It's honestly. I somewhat understand the GameStop story. Um, if you want me to try to explain it. Unless, uh, if you want to talk about one of these other stories, by all means, if you think they're more exciting. I want to talk about the Apple Watch thing. Hey, that was the only, yeah, that was the only one. Well, let's start there. Okay. iOS 14 and a half is under development in beta right now. Actually, I'm on the beta track, so maybe I'll get it. Um, although my watch isn't in beta, but uh, it's going to add a couple new features, which is pretty exciting. But probably the biggest one, the one you're going to use the most, that's probably the most exciting, is uh, using Apple Watch to authenticate and unlock your iPhone. Now, the issue is, I'm sure you guys have run into this, with Face ID, if you're wearing a mask, it does not work. It's kind of a pain. You're putting in your passcode a lot. Uh, but you guys also know that they already offer this trick on the Mac, where if your phone is near your Mac, it's automatically unlocked. Well, they're going to be rolling that out to the Apple Watch in this 14 and a half update. All you do is lift your iPhone to turn on the screen, and you'll feel a little nudge of haptic feedback on the watch to indicate your phone has been unlocked. Now, the devices must be in close proximity, unsurprising, um, and your Apple Watch also has to be unlocked, also not surprising. The shortcut is only good for unlocking the phone. App Store and iTunes purchases will still require authentication, same with Apple Pay. Um, and you'll still be asked to put in your passcode every few hours, even when the unlock with Apple Watch is enabled. Um, 14.5 also includes app tracking transparency controls, which we have a little story about in here as well. Uh, it also adds Xbox Series 10 and PlayStation 5 controller support, uh, 5G dual SIM functionalities, and some Siri enhancements like the ability to call emergency contacts. So two things on this. Uh, did you also know that the... Because you mentioned that you can use the Apple Watch to unlock your Mac uh, today. But did you know that on the Mac, other apps can hook into that functionality, uh, like like Face ID as an API? So like One Password, for example, instead of having to use Touch ID or type in your master password to get to your all your passwords, you can just double tap on your watch. Oh, that's cool. What? Yeah, especially useful if you use an Apple laptop in clamshell mode and you can't get to the Touch ID thing because it's closed. Uh, and my other thing is, isn't it is it unusual that it's, I guess it's January, but it, it feels like in a typical year, we would only get to about iOS X.5 or X.6. 
and we're here and it's January. Yeah, they've had a lot of updates, but wasn't 14... I See, now I have to look up at the revision. 14.4 was mostly, though, like a big security update. Um, hmm. I'm going to iOS 14 versions. Um, so I know they've had a couple releases this year where it, or last year, I guess, where it was, uh, they added features, like big features on some of those point releases. Yeah, point, point one was... Um, the, the updated release for iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, updates to widgets, app library. 14.2 was uh, the revamp media controls, face detection in the magnifier app, new emojis. 14.3 was Apple Fitness Plus um, and Apple Pro Raw. 14.4, that was um, a lot of security stuff. And then 14.5, like we said, adds these features. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's good that they're continuing to update it and add stuff and address it. I think, you know, using the watch is a smart, um, a pretty smart way to, to deal with the face mask issue. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, uh, my curiosity is, is what is the proximity? Like, if I'm sitting with Dan and his phone's on the table, could I just, like, grab it and open it? <clears throat> I mean, obviously, you'd be there. Oh, but... doesn't it prompts you to double tap on your watch. Is how it works on the Mac. No, I believe it just gives you a buzz, but I don't, from what really? I've read, it just unlocks it. On my Mac, it, like, shoots you right in. Maybe it's a setting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to log in on the Mac, it shoots you right in. Right. But for the API one, it does ask you to double tap. Mm. To, like, that makes confirm. sense. Right. But I guess it'd be, it would be hard to double tap on your phone while you're holding it up to your face. It'd be hard to double tap on your watch, rather. That's a good point. That's true. You're just, like, holding it and you're doing this. <laughs> yeah, that'd be impressive, whoever can figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, that, is, uh, that is cool. That is cool. Uh, I do know the other one of the other big updates Apple put out today was that, well, which I was excited about. Have you guys tried Apple Fitness Plus? Yes. What's what's yeah. the uh, what I have not what's the uh, review on it? I like the idea, but the thing I did the the fitness plus that I participated plus. in, yeah. um, it had a lot of jumping, and I have like you know there are neighbors below me. Also, I live in an old building, and I'm a, not a small person, so like if I'm <laughs> If I'm like doing jumping jacks in my apartment, like we're gonna be shaking the building. So that was my my gripe, but it seemed cool. Also, it didn't work with my watch because I just can't update my watch anymore. Um, because my watch does the thing every time, like where mysteriously, like ninety percent of the space on the watch is filled, yep. and you can't delete it. Like I can go apps and it is still too full to do the update so the only way for me to do an update is to unpair like to reset my watch and like clean install an update and then repair it so i only update for like really good stuff <laughs> i might update for this for for this uh this like you know auto unlock thing but that, that that's all i'm probably still on like watch os 13 who knows yeah, I uh, don't have that the jumping problem so much. Uh, I've done a couple of the workouts, and it's it's pretty cool. I haven't done, like, I haven't never taken a fitness class, so I don't know how much of the stuff is, you know, any fitness class would do that. It does, uh, I think it, they're very well produced. Getting the rings on the screen is super cool. And sometimes the people are a little bit too sincere. They're a little, they're a little excited uh, for what's going on. It comes across a little cheesy, but that's probably par for the course. Uh, my only other complaint is I think they could do a lot more with the discoverability of which 
two sizes there are and helping you pick one. Uh, right, like something the Ring Fit did, it still does, that is, is cool is it's looking at your vitals as you're exercising and then suggesting that you like, you know, turn up the intensity or down the intensity. And I noticed that in, in all of the videos, they have like these, um, I don't know what they call them, alternate forms that make things harder or easier. Uh, usually both is one that mm -hmm. makes it harder and one that makes it easier. And it'd be really cool if it knew like where your vitals are at and just pivoted. It's like, oh, like here, let's let's slow it down a little bit. Now do it uh, like the the push up with the kneeling or, or whatever. Or, or now do the push up one handed. Uh, it'd be cool if it was a bit more dynamic, but I, I like it a lot. I'll continue to use it and pay for it, especially as we're going to be in places where it's not like we have any equipment. So we'll just have to exercise in a room somewhere. And if they're pretty good about uh, specifying the exercises that, I don't know if they specify the exercises that don't need any equipment or if they provide alternate forms. Mm. Uh, I don't remember. But yeah, I'm a fan. No, I only bring it up because they're, uh, they announced they're officially adding AirPlay support. Uh, so you can finally get all the cool stuff without having to own an Apple TV, which is exciting for me because I don't own one, but I do own Apple Play, uh, AirPlay televisions. So I get to give it a shot. So, okay, well, good. I'll give it a shot. Nice. Um, let's see. What else would we like to talk about, guys? We do, unfortunately, have time for one more story. <laughs> Should we talk about the thing? We can talk about the You want to talk about the thing? Let's talk about the thing. I can try to explain this. I don't know any of the history, but I can explain mechanically what's going on. Is that the, the, the stonks? Are we going to talk about the stonks? Is that useful? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it might be. I mean, I, I, you know, obviously it, it involves the the Reddit Wall Street bets was sort of um, right. where where the story began. Um, there was a lot of talk around the GameStop stock specifically um, being potentially undervalued. It was at three bucks a share at one point. Um, and then it started to go up. Dan, why don't you explain it from this point? You don't know, like, I, I don't know the mechanism by which the people, there were people on Reddit. Uh, here, let me start over. There are people on Reddit and they all got together through various means, it seemed like, and decided that they were all going to buy and hold GameStop stock. I allegedly, I think, because there were money companies, I don't know if they're hedge funds or investment firms or whatever, which had shorted the stock. Uh, and by driving up the price and holding and not selling, they would screw those people over. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when, when you short a stock, you're essentially borrowing money against it. Um, I, I had explained very simply to me, which was like, if you you borrow you buy a stock from someone and then promise to give it back to, to give it back to them, and if the price of the stock goes down, then you can uh, sell it. You can buy. You can sell the stock immediately when you buy it, and then buy another stock a month later when the payment is due. Uh, and if the stock went down ten percent, you just made ten percent. Of, of money right i think i think the parallel i read that i really thought was funny was it's like if colby wanted to borrow my dvds of the television show the office uh and then colby decided when he had them that he was going to sell them because the market was hot and then in two weeks when i asked for it he was just going to buy a new copy on ebay to give to me uh so i'd never be <laughs> any the wiser but what Colby didn't realize is that the office dvds went through the roof and now he has to come up with not only giving me my dvd but also all the extra money to procure that replacement copy. And that's the issue. When you short sells, you're essentially betting that the stock will go down. It's a problem when the stock goes up. And when it goes up a lot, you're really screwed to the tunes of billions of dollars. Yeah. The... Right. Your potential losses are infinite. Yes. That's yes. exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> um, and then the next day, was this last Wednesday? And then the next day, 
Robin Hood, which is a tech company that allows you to buy stocks for free. Before Robin Hood, it was mostly the case that you had to pay a fee on each stock that you bought, I think. Yeah. Um, they announced that they were not going to allow the purchase of this stock the next day. Um, and there are lots of conspiracy theories about why that was. And the thing that I'd never realized, though it makes sense, is the reason why Robinhood can allow you to buy stocks without a fee isn't because they are taking out the middleman and, and passing the savings on to you, because then how would they make money? Uh, they have downstream providers. I don't know what you'd call it. They have downstream providers who provide the stocks that you are quote unquote buying. You are buying them for a price that was the price that they were worth in the market at the time you placed the buy. But the but by the time the buy is executed, some time may have passed. And the company that is providing you this stock, which is not Robinhood, could decide to give you that stock from existing stock that they already happen to own and are not buying anything. Uh, is one half of the explanation I heard. And Robinhood makes money by, in, in, in one sense, by allowing these companies to be the intermediary and to see all the buys happen before they're going to happen. And to like, if they see a bunch of GameStop stock getting bought, they might be like, oh shit, let's, let's all buy a bunch of GameStop stock. GameStop stock. Uh, because we can see, in, we can literally see into the future and see that the price is going to go up. Let's and then let's give like half of it to the people who bought it, and let's pocket the other half. And now we make more money. Uh, is one that's one explanation as to like what's going on there. And but sometimes Robinhood has to pay money anyways, and that's despite the fact that yeah, so. That's where the thing starts to, my understanding starts to break down. But it's, it's not so simple. Robinhood is, it's not as simple as they're just giving you free trades on stocks. They have all these intermediaries and middle middle people. Well, and it's a lot of other, I mean, E-Trade stopped trading it. I mean, a number of companies stopped trading it. Uh, and, and it just comes back to that idea that y you don't actually own those stocks. E-Trade or Robinhood does. And you have the right, it's the same way when you put your money in a bank, if that bank goes out of business, which now we have federal guarantees, but back before when we didn't, if that bank went out of business, you just didn't get your money back. Um, and it's kind of the same idea where they have to pay money to execute all these trades. Um, and it's incredibly expensive. I read somewhere that um, Robin Hood went through like 500 million and had to get like a $1 billion loan to just stay in business. Um it's it is absolutely uh, absolutely wild, but it just goes to show that the stock market is a very bad representation of the state of our economy, and essentially doesn't accurately reflect the value of companies, but rather is just used to, for gambling for speculators. Yes. To make money. it's very stupid. Yeah. Did you see the uh, the story that uh, Robin Hood gave all their employees a forty five dollar DoorDash gift card to get pizza for themselves as a morale boosting tactic? Yep. Yep. How nice of them. <laughs> how nice. Well, the crazy thing is, is you know, GameStop had not great fundamentals, but like had cash in the like weren't on the doorstep of bankruptcy or anything. Like they were like an okay company. You know, their stock probably was a little undervalued, um, just not to the point where it was worth you know four hundred bucks a share at one point. But I, I was talking with someone about this the other day, and it was like. You know, is it wrong? Oh, I was talking with I was talking with Matt, Dan. I don't know if you know this story, but back in college, back in our sophomore year, I challenged Matt because Matt thinks he's very smart, <laughs> and I said, Matt, I'm going to give you ten thousand fake dollars, and I'm going to let you build a portfolio of stocks. You got to pick ten stocks. I'm going to put a thousand in each, and you can pick any ten stocks you want, and I'll track it over time. And he, Matt, did the Matt thing where he literally, I think, just looked around the room and he invested in. 
the Home Depot, Starbucks, Activision, um, what else? Uh, what used to be Nabisco is uh, Mondelez is now the parent company. Just literally all consumer brands you've heard of. That was like his whole investment strategy. And so the other day I was talking with him and we, this came up. So I went and I looked. He doubled his money in like three years. And now this was, what, eight years ago now? I mean, he probably tripled his money at that point. But now it's like the Home Depot is worth like 200 bucks a share. I mean, these companies, you had no... I, Starbucks is like... Oh, he invested in Microsoft, which at the time was like $90 a share and is now like $450 a share. I mean, it's it, it just... It, it doesn't mean anything. It's crazy. It drives me nuts. It's really wild. And Matt is a very good investor. That That's my takeaway. Turns out. Just invest in things people buy. Go figure. <laughs> who, who would have thought that was a good plan? <laughs> but it. But there's no reason why... There's no fundamental reason why that is true. Right. Right. A stock, owning a stock used to mean you owned a piece of that company. Uh, back back when they actually paid dividends, right? You actually got a cut of the profit because you owned a piece. Um, and now you only buy it just for the fact you're going to sell it to make money yeah. or to gamble against it. You know, it's how it's how short of a time you can own it, not how long. Hmm. Ugh. I don't know, man. Maybe you should buy some gold and bury it in your backyard. I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I, I don't do stocks anymore. I'm out of stocks because I just couldn't do it anymore. My last stock was I did I did good on Roku when they were on their nice climb, and then I sold it, and I was like, I'm done. I'm gonna end on a win, and I'm not, I just I don't do stocks anymore. Yeah, I don't really like to f follow it. It stresses me out. I do a little bit of Robin Hood. Like, I have some stuff in Robin Hood that I've had in there for, I don't know, four or five years, but I don't, I don't know. I don't like to look very often because it's stressful and you get all, like, jeeped up and. Well, you know, if, if, the, if anything good comes out of this stupid, first of all, this whole thing's stupid, but if anything comes out of it that's positive, it's that I want the average American to have the knowledge and skill to go and make money on the stock market for no reason, like most rich people. Like, if that is the outcome of this, where it's like, okay, we all agree we're going to invest in a stock and we're all going to just make imaginary money because it went up, like, that's awesome. Like, I want that. Like, that I am totally in favor of. And I hope that, like you said, everyone gets a little Robin Hood, puts a little money in it. We all are like, okay, we all know this stock is going up, so everyone put your money in it, and then, like, we all make money. That would be great. I don't think it's going to happen, but. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, all righty. Well, I think we've newsed it enough. Newsed it. Newsed we we got we to gotta, we gotta go pick it up. Make make these picks happen. It's picks. It's part of a show where you must bring something we want to share. Uh, I am number one on the list here, so I'm going to quickly go first. Uh, I had a hard drive I wanted to open up. Uh, and it had one of those stupid little screws that nobody has. Uh, and it inspired me to pick up this iFixit Essential Electronics Toolkit, um, which has a, a great number of tools in it. It's got the screwdriver with the key bits, uh, but it also has a lot of uh, great uh, sort of physical manipulation of device tools, like on your phone, if you have to put in a new screen or a new hard drive or a new battery or something. It's got tweezers, a spudger, a jimmy, opening picks, um, and it comes in a really nice plastic case, all for twenty-five bucks. Um, I'm very excited to to have this. It's about time, long overdue. Um, they have more expensive sets with more bits and features and things like that, but I thought this was a good base set to have. So if anyone needs any electronics repaired, give me a call. I've got the tools. So the iFixit Essential Electronics Toolkit available at iFixit.com. Um, what about you, uh, Dan? Let's see. Last month, December, maybe it was December, November, at some point, time has no meaning. Uh, I watched, like everyone else, I watched Queen's Gambit on Netflix. Uh, pretty cool TV show about chess. In part about chess. And then I... I don't know how this happened, but eventually, oh, 
Actually, I think we talked about this on the show, but last year or the year before at some point, I had gotten into speed chess on YouTube and, and chess hustlers where they they like try to they, they go on the street in New York and all these different cities and they say like I, I bet you 20 bucks I could beat you in chess in 10 minutes and then and they you know they do it and that's how they make money and then you, you get the the grandmaster chess players coming in to like beat the brakes off of the chess hustlers it's it's a great great YouTube subgenre um but then after watching Queen's Gambit uh I started watching more chess videos that are more like i don't know traditional chess videos and then from that i discovered that there's this whole like chess twitch um scene chess is a huge thing on twitch because streamers can all play it no matter what game they play and you don't need any mechanical skill to play it's not like call of duty or or smash or something where you have to spend a year getting good at the game in order to play anyone can play can like physically play chess uh so i got, I got kind of into that and then i saw a bunch of people using this website called chess.com to play chess which is free for a lot of things and it does the i don't know exactly what you call this but it has this feature where it'll analyze your the game as it's going and show you like what are i don't know how it calculates it but maybe it's like what percentage of moves result in a win from your current situation uh and it teaches you about the different openings and like and tells you when this is like a named opening or a named response or something like that uh and you can play against computers and it'll do matchmaking with with humans and stuff there's all sorts of like puzzles which is like you know different chess scenarios i guess where you have to try to figure out what the best move is all sorts of things i i don't understand it but it's mostly free uh check out chess.com if you're bored also they have apps on all the things very cool i i did i was curious so i did check out checkers.com uh but that is for the checkers rallies hamburger chain uh, <laughs> so no no such luck uh but chess.com very memorable super cool um that's great colby you've got a uh a unique pick for us here oh yeah uh i really haven't like gotten any new things recently but the one big and and life affecting new thing i did get is a dishwasher a new dishwasher mine was broken for some months and the new one is great it cleans things really well it's very quiet and i like it that's all i have to say about that my only gripe is that so it has the top rack which is very cool. Great to place to put all your silverware in. You can get rid of that stupid basket because you never you don't need it anymore. So you have bottom space for big stuff. But the problem is the top racks takes up top space. So like you're you're uh, paying a penalty, a height penalty for some things some things that used to fit on what was previously the top rack and is currently in and is now the middle rack. Uh, some things don't quite fit. Like the middle rack is adjustable, which is nice. Like you can move it up and down, but even so, like, you know, there's always a trade off. If you move it too far down, like, yeah, things fit in the top. And now, like, even fewer things fit in the bottom. Like my plates don't even fit in the bottom when the the middle rack is on the in any case. It, top dishwasher rack. Tetris. Yeah, right, right. Um it's great though. The top I'm I'm a big fan of the the third rack. It was a good idea. Nice. Uh, I, you just got me thinking. I don't think it's this, but I was trying to think. What is the most expensive thing we've ever picked on the show? Ooh. Now, I don't think it's this because if you look at like iPads and, and iPhones and stuff that retail for nine hundred a thousand, I'm sure you picked MacBooks at some point or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. but I'd be curious to know. Did we ever pick a car? I was <laughs> wondering if I ever pick because I I would pick my car. I like my car a lot, so maybe I would pick it. Um. Do I pick like my house or something? I don't know. Like, what is the most? Uh, that would be a fun record if if I, we could ever find that out. I'm curious. Time for a new uh, feature, Colby. Right, right. Price, <laughs> price, needed value, and then generate some referral links, and then we'll really get cooking. Yeah, 
um, I did I did buy something expensive on Amazon the other day, and I used our referral code. So hopefully that adds up to a few pennies for us us guys. <laughs> As you should. How nice that would be. Finally make some money on the stupid, stupid, stupid. Uh, I just got my annual Adobe Creative Cloud subscription renewal. <laughs> why do you? <laughs> why? Uh, yeah, why do I pay for that? I don't know, Colby. I don't know. I don't know because I like the software a lot. I do get. I did steal my brother's uh, work email, so I do get the teacher's discount. So it's like half price. It's still too much, but I do use it. <laughs> it's half price. A lot. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my god, Adobe man, those schmucks. And I use the audio editing software, which is only in the really good packages because nobody uses it. But I like it. Ugh. Man, they really got us with the subscription. Of all the people who got who got us with the subscriptions, I think Adobe and you would just think they would just try, like you'd be like, oh, it's a subscription. It can't be that like you know ten dollars a month. No, it's like really expensive. <laughs> it's annoying. Subscriptions are killing me. I, I today I was like. I watch, like, if you went on my Roku and timed, like, which streaming app I watch more than any other, it's probably YouTube. And I'm debating, like, should I get YouTube premium and skip the ads? Like, I watch it a lot. But then it's like, well, what other service am I going to cancel to make up, like, the 12 or 13 bucks it is to get the premium? Yeah. Such a tough problem. Tough life, man. I really need the thing that, like monitors what i'm watching and tells me what to cancel like hey idiot cancel hbo you haven't watched it in three weeks well that's the other thing where it's hbo max is a good example because i don't watch it a lot but there's always something in like a month or two i'm gonna want to watch and i'm like why well, not gonna go through the hassle of you know the hassle of canceling it now and then in a month re-signing up um I'm, I'm too lazy and it really shows in my wallet um guys anything else you'd like to plug this evening discuss share I, I absolutely got to talk about up for debate you know i do uh if it's end of don't panic you know it's up for debate time we just had a just a, just superstar a plus usda prime episode last week where matt and i went and live commented on super bowl halftime shows and i put too much time into editing this so the audio sounds good and the video is great because it's actually like the video of the halftime show with our little faces commenting on it. So you don't even have to sync it up. Just pull up the YouTube version. Nice. And I'm telling you, their halftime shows, you will be shocked exist. So it was a really, really fun. I'm very proud of that episode. So if you get a chance, go to YouTube, spend a little time watching that. Uh, and coming up over the next two weeks, uh, our Super Bowl prop bets are back. I was actually making the list uh, before our show tonight. We'll have all of our standard bets, the coin toss, the length of the national anthem, which Gatorade color they'll dump at the end. Matt has beat me four out of five years. Will I finally get a chance? And the last two years he's won. So will I finally get my revenge? You're going to watch the show and find out. But I do have to ask you guys, because when we come back next week, the Super Bowl will be over. It'll be the Monday after the Super Bowl. Do you guys have a pick? Kansas City Chiefs or Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Any any particular opinion on the on the Super of Bowls? Or no, that's also okay. I don't have an opinion. I'm going to watch. I think, I don't think I'll be sad whatever happens because, like, I don't know. Again, like, good for him. That's ridiculous. That's a ridiculous thing to happen. But if he loses, like, well, he shouldn't have left. So, you know? You know, it's one of those things where it's like, of the, like, final four teams, like, this is the least interesting matchup to me because I don't... Mahomes won last year, and I don't like back-to-back -back winners, and they're too good, and so I can't really root for them. But then Tom Brady is like, he's Tom Brady. Like, yeah, he's good at football, but he also kind of sucks. But also, if the Bucks win, it means Ant I hate Antonio Brown. Oh, He's a bad guy, and he's and he will get a Super Bowl ring if they win. And, so, and also, Bruce Arians is like the poor man's uh, Andy Reid. And so I'm kind of just like, I don't like either team. I don't know any, I mean, I don't know anything about the Bucks at all, like, remotely. Anything that you just said. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to, you got a week to catch up. Um, yeah, no, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. But please follow Add Up for Debate TV, where I, as always, will be live tweeting the Super Bowl, announcing how we do throughout the game. So you're going to want, and Matt comments back, and we retweet. It's a lot of fun, so... Check that out over at UpForDebate.tv. Um, 
Guys, we, we got to end it here. We're done. We're cooked. I got to go dig my way out of a snowstorm here. Uh, so we're going to end it here. But don't panic. That is our website. It's excellent. You should go there. The episodes are there. The picks are there. Uh, so you don't have to remember the exact model of Colby's dishwasher. You can just check out the link and buy it there. Uh, it's really great. You can also subscribe wherever you get podcasts on all the major networks uh, and apps. We are there. And, of course, you can follow us at Don't Panic Show on Twitter or email us, Don't Panic Show at gmail.com. We will be back next week with a full Super Bowl recap. Probably not. Uh, and some great tech news. Also, probably not. Uh, but it will be a fun time. We hope you come back and join us. On behalf of Colby and Dan, I'm Sean. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time on another great episode of Don't Panic.